Hello my kin, I am kin and here is my first ever YouTube video. I decided that with the latest and last DLC for Total War Warhammer 2 that there was no better way to start my channel than with a huge chaos campaign led by none other than Archeon the Ever Chosen. So the reason I chose Archeon is because he was the man who started the end times. He was the one that led the, um, the first attacks and he is the one that was there at the end when the world exploded. Whilst I actually prefer this man here as a starting lord because he gets a hell cannon, Archeon, like I said before, he's just a cooler lord to play. He gives some good effects, some good your starting units, and we're just going to start normal campaign and normal battle difficulty. For this series I'm hoping to give you lots of insight on Archeon's lore and the other lords lore as we get them. As we take out lords I'm hoping to give you lore as well. So I'm hoping to make this a very informative YouTube series as well as some cool gameplay. So let's start the campaign. So Archeon was actually born Diedrich Kassner a few years after the first great war of chaos which was led by Magnus, a chaos champion. His father was a raiding Norskin champion from the Varg tribe, which we'll see in game, um, from the north, while his mother was an innocent Nordlander, which is in fact another faction in game, from the south. So he started off as a man. Um, I'll we'll continue with the lore, we'll just watch this opening cinematic and then get on to it. You are the ever-chosen. The Chaos Gods call you to action, mighty champion. Their lust for ruin must be sated. You shall go into the lands of the mortals to spread fear and destruction. The Norse tribes to the west shall fall easily before you. Find those willing to join your cause and slay the rest. Further to the south lie the nations of men. They will resist your advance, and for good reason. You will bring them annihilation, mighty lord. Devour the mortal souls to bring the favor of the Chaos Gods. March forth, and spread oblivion in their name. There we go, nice and simple. So Chaos, I've chosen Chaos again because they play very simply, so it will allow me to focus more on the lore than the actual gameplay. So if you're wondering, the man faction we saw here was actually Kislev, and Kislev falls reasonably quickly in the end times, but we'll see them get more units and more legendary lords in the new Warhammer 3 game. So it's like I was saying before, Archeon was actually a human and he was born in Nordland. When his mother died, it's not said how she died, he was adopted by a local Sigmarite priest and became a Knight Templar for the Order of the Twin-Tailed Comet, Twin-Tailed Orb, fighting in service of Sigmar. Which is a bit ironic, however, because he ends up fighting against Sigmar in the end times. So anyway, we're just going to simply move. So we've got 25 left to go on encampment. Campaign wise, what we want to focus on is getting rid of these marauders because if you see in the building tab This here is pointless. We want to try and get This building here in chaos warriors as soon as possible because Archeon buffs them a lot, but for now We'll just upgrade our mountain settlement For technology wise What we want to do is we want to get these two and these three actually as soon as possible which will give us more replenishment rate and more horde growth which is good for chaos because we keep moving so we'll grab this one here and as chaos when we destroy a settlement we can raise a, a tribe and if we raise four tribes we'll be able to recruit Sigvold and I really like Sigvold lore wise I think he's really interesting and a good character so hopefully we can get him as soon as possible Anyway, that's all we're doing for the first turn. Next turn we'll attack that. Diplomacy wise, we really don't do diplomacy. We could probably get a treaty with them, but I don't think it's worth it because we just want to kill him to get his trait. Anyway, there we go. 
So in a book written, in a book of divination written by Necromodo the Insane, who's another man from the lore, it was said that North and South Blood would meet to spawn the greatest ever chosen. When Diedrich, who's Archeon, found out about his heritage and the eventual destiny, he traveled all the way to the Holy temp Temple of Sigma in the cap Imperial capital of Altdorf, which is where you start if you were starting an empire campaign. So when he found that out, he tried to go there to, to do anything to stop it. So let's attack this, declare war. However, when he went to the temple, he was not replied, no one replied, and he then he knew that he was doomed. In his despair, he renounced the god Sigma, but still held on tightly to his hate for the dark, evil gods of chaos, and he accepted his fate. And, side note here, even when Archeon became the Ever Chosen, he still continued to resent the chaos gods for the pain and misery they had brought among him. If you don't know who the Chaos Gods are, we, we can just auto this, we won't lose anyone. If you're not sure who the Chaos Gods are, there are four of them. There's Korn, who is the Blood God and the God of War. There's Nurgle. Oh, what's this? Sort of striking. Anyway, there's Nurgle, um, who's the God of Disease and Pox and stuff. He's, he's quite a cool God, and all his stuff is really gross. So see here, we could awaken a tribe, but we want the money for the technology, so we'll grab that right now. So there's the um, there's Nurgle, then there's Slanesh, and Slanesh is the god of um, pleasure and twisted desires and stuff. He's interesting to say the least. And then the last one is Zeech, who is the god of change. And he's quite interested in himself. He's probably the lesser known of the four Chaos Gods, but he's, he's pretty cool. Anyway, for Archeon, leveling up, we could get this right now, which would be very good, because all our guys are heavy armoured and will probably lose Vigor faster than other units. But we're just going to grab Root Marcher, give us more campaign movement range. And we also got that sword, which we've got here. Keep it on him, he's the only one we have at the moment. And we'll get our new technology. And that's the turn done. So once Archeon found out about his destiny, he started searching for treasures of chaos so he could become the Ever Chosen and fulfill his destiny. The first of the treasures he sought was a special mark of chaos that held the blessings of all four chaos gods combining all the advantages of the individual gods, blessing the bearer with all their power. Okay, so these guys have come here, we can go take them. So his first step was go was to go to the altar of ultimate darkness in Nagaroth, which is a settlement over in Nagarond where you can get if you're playing as the Dark Elves. He had a band of Chaos Warriors that he named the Swords of Chaos, and they battled their way to the Citadel. I'm just wondering no, they're not one of the regiments of renown. Anyway, let's go and attack them. A step too far. We might have to play it since they've got their female warriors. That shouldn't be too hard. You dare fail the slaughterer. So once Archeon and his buddies... Oh, yeah, we'll fight this. Once Archeon and his buddies had um, forced Citadel, they were met with a darkness said to be darker than the heart of an, even a dark elf, which is a pretty considerable darkness. Archeon was unafraid, however, marched off alone into the pitch black he'd had since he was a very young boy. Uh, we'll take that, that's fine. So, we'll set that up. So they've got a reasonable decent army. Hopefully we can take them out without much problem. We can harass them with them. Maybe move the dogs here. So once they had gotten inside the citadel, or Archeon had, he finally has made his way to the um, to the altar, but as he marched, uncountable amounts of monsters and creatures threw themselves at him. Sadly, his steed was torn apart by the monsters. However, when Archeon saw the harm that had come to his 
dearest friend. He broke out into a frenzy and ended up killing all of them. So that was the first that was the first of Archeon's many deeds. And needless to say, when he finally got to the altar after killing so many of the monsters, he gave the gods the skulls and hearts of all the monsters he had killed as tribute to be acknowledged by them. And it, it is said that when the when he came out, his swords of chaos, his chaos warriors, saw them, saw him with the mark of ruination, the mark of the chaos gods on his forehead. So that was one of the first artifacts he got to announce himself to the gods, and so the gods finally were no, they knew of the ever chosen, and they knew that the ever chosen was now alive. Also, oh, looks like oh no, we're good. We can try and flank them with our horses, with our hounds. Sorry. Chaos Marauders. Archeon could shoot a fireball. Fireballs are always really fun to use. Oh, there we go. So we can charge Archeon in. Actually, we'll go with fight the Lord. So if you're wondering, yes, Archeon did have many other artifacts that he had to fight. And I will tell you about those as we play. Okay, our oh, horses are getting... Oh, we're getting attacked here. Hopefully we can just draw them off. Yep, so this is going all pretty well. To be expected, though. So after being branded by the Chaos Gods and getting their blessing, Archeon was told, was then meant to go and get the armor of Morka, who was the very first ever chosen. Because if you're wondering, Archeon was not the first ever chosen. There were multiple ever chosen before Archeon, though he was by far the most powerful and um, brutal of the lot. So he was meant to go get the armor of one of the first, very first ever chosen. The armor would make Archeon even more of a tank and allow only the strongest of blows to actually deal damage to him. So that was a must. That was a perfect thing to get. So to get it, where he stole a ship with his swords of chaos that was pulled by an ancient sea drake, a massive sea drake. So once they got that, once they got that ship, they sailed over to where they had to go. It's not said where, but they were said to go to a, oh, we can fireball him. Hopefully we get him. Hopefully we don't hit our own troops. Surely. Oh, so close. Actually, we go that way. You follow over there. There we go. Anyway, they were they went to a arrived at their destination and were met with savage half humans who had never seen the light of day before. Oh, get our chaos born out of here! Get our chaos born out of there! We might be losing a hound unit here. Oh, gotta get them out of there. Anyway, they were met with savage half-humans, and it took them six days to completely destroy the, the group of half-humans and destroy their city. Once they destroyed their city, um, he, Archeon found the armor pretty easy, but before he could take the armor it is, as his own, the spirit of Morka, the first ever chosen, rose up and possessed the armor to fight him. Let's see if we can take him out here. There we go, done. And army losses should kick him pretty quick with one. Yeah, we've won this. It's a bit of a close fight. Looks like we lost one of our hound units. Yeah, there we go. They've broken. Done. 
They have regeneration. No, they don't have regeneration. That sucks. There we go. They're broken. So Archeon and Morka had to fight. Morka obviously being possessing the um, armor that he had worn previously in life. And Archeon managed to best Morka and whacked him to the side before claiming the armor as his own. So it just stands as more proof that Archeon was a tank before he became the Ever Chosen. He truly was one of the best half Norsegan warriors in entire Warhammer history. So yeah, look, we did... See, look, I hate those guys. They did a lot of damage on us. And we might still have our Hound unit, but I wouldn't count on it. Yep, we still got everyone. And we'll definitely take the replenishment rate for that. We might have to hunt them down too. Yes, we're looking pretty beaten up. However, we can give Archeon this. We could chase them down. We might have to play it though. Can we do our research? No. So we can't get out that for research. We won't get enough at, um, if we take out that army. So we'll get, just get skulls for the skull throne, which will give us more loot from um, post battle income. We might as well hunt these guys down. So if we order that, yep, yeah, we lose two hounds in Chaos Spawn. We'll have to play that as well and just deal with them to our skirmishes and um, Archeon. It'll be pretty easy. So yes, Archeon went on to claim more Chaos Artifacts, which I'll describe in a later couple videos. Um, and he, obviously, he took came the Archeon he is now. now. Oh, that's perfect. Not that we have much magic anyway. Very well. Let's just focus on this fight for a while. We'll move our hounds and Chaos Spawn way back, and they can hide in the forest. And just sit this one out. Okay. Here we go. We can probably make this go a bit faster. Just don't want to lose our guys. Yeah, just run. Oh. Now we can send our dudes in. It's going to be pretty quick and pretty brutal. We can just move them around the side if we need them later on. Hopefully army losses will kick in. If we take out these guys, Archeon should deal to them. Archeon's pretty strong. Yeah, there's only one left. Archeon, you got, yeah, we're done. Oh, we don't want them going after our hidden units. Oh. Oh no, wrong hidden units. Okay, that way. They shouldn't take out. There we go, and they're done. They'll get melted. Done! Easy one. There we go. We did lose some, but they're just Chaos Marauderers. We want to get you get rid of our Chaos Marauderers as soon as possible because the Chaos Warriors are just so much better. Like I said before, we want to get that building and then just get rid of the Chaos Marauder building. It's not any use to us. So for this hunting down some 
heroes and lords from the other factions to make Archeon even more of a tank. Ooh, got some armor. And we'll grab the replenishment rate, though it's not much. We might as well. Now go. Ooh, nice. And for our next skill point, we'll get dominating, pre dominating presence. It gives everyone some more leadership. Though we probably don't need it, it's always another good one to get, just like Root Marcher. And then we'll just move our way towards Frozen Landing. At Frozen Landing, we will raise a tribe. I think it will be a good idea to raise a tribe there, as we'll get more growth and replenishment, and we'll have someone to help us fight. Um, so I said Sigvold, he, we raised four tribes and we'll get Sigvold. If you're wondering how we get Colex Sun Eater, we just gotta unlock the Dragon Ogre building, which we probably won't begin for a while. I'm more focused on getting Sigvold than, um, Colex Sun Eater. Though Colex does have some good lore, it just, it's, it's okay, but it just isn't as good as Sigvold's. So we can probably attack that, we might have to play it. Because we might lose our Chaos Spawn, but we'll just see what it's like. <sighs> yep, we're going to have to play that. It should be pretty easy. Like we did before, we just won't spawn in Hounds. We'll just tank it with our... Oh, look at this map. Okay. Well, they'll set up inside there. And we should take... We'll just start deploying. Okay. These will sit it out. They will to come! Might be wanna be a Don't wanna get them killed. I can just sit here and we'll just sit up like that. That's what the master's been! Yes! So later on in the campaign, if some of our units get good chevrons and everything, we can just rename our units. Because I like doing that. Renaming units is fun. And it gives more lore to your units. You can make them be tougher than they actually sound. So they're on skirmish, so they won't let them get into melee. Ooh. Okay, we'll move away. Get them! Yeah, yes, look at us, all slow. Fast forward a bit. Hopefully they just let us take out their troops. So we'll just beeline Archeon for their lord. Oh, we're in melee, that's fine, we can take them. There we go, and Archeon's fighting their lord. We can charge our guys through. Chaos Marauders! Finch's many glories! Wreck and ruin! Time to despair! Archeron! So hopefully we can pop off a fireball at their lords. Oh, hit a couple of our own, but that's fine. We'll just have our Marauders taken out. And move our other Chaos Warriors in. Okay, so these are Marauder Champions, so they might be a bit harder. We'll have Archeon go around and take them out. We can also have our Hounds go after the Lord, because we really want to kill him. Not that it'll matter, he'll die anyway. But we probably just want to stay here and let it all fight. We could go do some attacking. Yeah, this this will be a bit of a slog. Two. 
too easy. Is the Lord gone? Yep. Alright. Archeon's doing fine. We'll buff him. Oh, and also we can use his shield. We won't do that though. Won't bother. Okay. okay. There we go. Done. And they'll all be dead because they're in the settlement. There you go. Too easy, too easy. But I think from now on, we won't care if our marauderers or hounds get killed, because we just want to replace them. So it's fine. Oh, that's a good amount of money. And we get a banner. What's the banner do? Leadership. We won't put that on anyone just yet. There's, like I said before, we've got pretty good leadership. And now we'll awaken a tribe. So this tribe is now our vassal, and they, they fight for us, and they are at war, whoever we're at war with. And if you look at our income, they're only giving us seven income, but we're not doing it for that. We're doing it to get sick rolled. And so for our next one, Blessed by Chaos, increases Chaos Warriors and Chaos Spawn, which will be which will be good. So we'll grab that. And then just move a little bit. I don't think they'll get to us. We'll go into encampment. We could go to here, but that would be wasting some growth that we could get to get our Chaos Warriors, but I think it's worth it for now. Got plenty of money, we've got our technology going, we're fine. Might want to recruit another Horseman unit though, they can be quite good to annoy the enemy. This is all going pretty well. Oh. Here we have Throt the Unclean. If you don't know Throt's lore, there's not much to know about him really. He's one of, he's the most twisted and ingenious master mutators of Clan Mulder, which is the um, the faction he plays with. He's completely mutated as a result of the warp stone usage. He's one of the nine lords of Hell's Pit as well, and known for creating lots of monsters. In fact, the settlement he starts with is Hell Pit right here, so he's probably got this as well. So I think... He's in March. We might as well take him. Because if we take him and beat him, Archeon will get Throt's character trait, and I'm pretty sure that's a good 10% hit points for Archeon. Yep, we're declaring war. And that's a decisive victory. We don't even have to play it. Boom. And we might as well take the favor because we want lots of money for our next technology. And as far as I know, Throt has no law in the end times. He just doesn't seem to be around in the end times. I don't even think it's described how he dies, if it's in the end times or if it's not. So that's a bit disappointing. But that's our first legendary lord taken out and dealt with. And we'll give Archeon, we'll upgrade Archeon's fireball. Because that's always very good to use. And he should have a trait. Deep cleaner. 10% hit points. So right now we'll head take out the dwarfs. No, I will not shame my clan. Hopefully he comes out and attacks us on his own. Because that'll be a lot easier than attacking the settlement. My destiny lies this way. We'll just march out. Oh, we they've got an army there. Never. Yeah, we no. should we should be fine. So we, we just set up camp here and wait for them to attack. We should be alright. So I think on that note everyone, I'm going to end my video here just before our war with the dwarfs. Thank you for watching my first video. I hope it was informative and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, 
If you did like it, please show your love in some way. It'll encourage me to make more of these videos and hopefully grow my channel. Other than that, I'll see you next time, everybody. Goodbye.